Good afternoon. Yeah. Welcome to Mass of St. Michael the Archangel Parish. Our celebrant today is Father Branson. Today we celebrate the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time. This Mass is being offered with the intentions of all the fathers, Karen Stephan, and for the repose of the souls of John and Pauline Conrad, Stan and Marie Merrick, Joshua Matheson, and Juan Andrews. For more information about what's going on in the parish, please read Flock Note email that is sent weekly, or head to our website at stmichael77.org, or see the Sunday Bulletin. The Knights of Columbus June Events, Backpack and School Supplies Fundraiser. List of supplies are in the bulletin and at the greeter's table. Supplies and backpacks will be collected through June for distribution in July. Join us for an evening of music as the spring quartet, led by our choir director, Diana Rivera, takes us from Bach to the Beatles and beyond <laughs> on Saturday, June 22nd, after the 4 p.m. mass. Monetary donation to benefit the building fund. Please note, it is our custom not to leave Mass until the choir is finished singing. As we prepare for Mass, let us silence our cell phones and observe a moment of silence. Our professional hymn is Into the Novel. Oh, 
find it good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O I, to proclaim your kindness at dawn, and your faithfulness throughout the night. Lord, it is Just one shall flourish like the palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. That day are planted in the house of the Lord, shall flourish in the courts of our God. Shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord, my rock in whom there is no wrong. Lord is A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous. Although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of, the, of Christ, so that each may receive the recompense, according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land, 
and would sleep and rise night and day. And through it all, the sea would stop and grow. He knows not how. Of his own accord, the land yields fruit. First the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he rules the sickle at once, for the harvest is come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what cargo can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that, when it is sown in the ground, it is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the sky could dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the words of them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them. But he was no disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. So I see all the fathers are not going to be here tonight because they're waiting for the 10 o'clock donut giveaway. <laughs> so you guys can come back tomorrow and get your donuts too. As I said before, I have a dream that you guys can receive donuts at 4 o'clock as well. Scott, I'm talking about another field. Okay. Yeah. You don't have to have some today. Don't ruin their dinner. <laughs> It's hot. I don't feel like talking. Give <laughs> it a real short homily and sit down, you'd be very upset. Bishop, you've just been seen. So I'll talk. Mark chapter 4 is a series of agricultural parables. We're in chapter 4 today. We'll be in chapter 4 next week. We didn't do the first part of Mark, chapter 4. This is the part where the sower seeds, sows the seed and hits the rock, it hits the soil, it hits the weeds, and you know, 30, 40, 60, 100 fold. We're going to go over that today. But it's true. It applies to these two parables we have today. Because they're all about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven and how it works. God has spoken to us in the Old Testament about the kingdom of heaven. It's what people look forward to and still look forward to at the end of their lives. The ancient Jewish people were the banquet. They had to fight for food. They had to work and work and work like dogs get food. So for them, it was a banquet that happened at the end of time. For them, it wasn't about happening now. But Jesus came along and said, hey, wait a minute. The kingdom of heaven is happening now. So he gives us these two parables that show us how the kingdom of God works. Now, most of our winter visitors that are farmers would like this one, the first one, and understand it better than a lot of us. But... Scattering seed. Once again, we see the guy scattering seed and so on. And then he's going to go about his life. And he's not going to understand or know what's happening underground with the seed. We can go on YouTube and see time lapses now, and that's very wonderful. But back then, they didn't know. But something would happen. The seed was setting out fruit. Then it sends out leaves and stems and the fruit, the grain. Jesus said this to his disciples because they were getting down. They were getting kind of despondent. They were seeing the pushback against the message that Jesus had sent them to preach. People weren't listening. They didn't want to listen. Go ahead and get out of here. So Jesus tells them, hey guys, you're sowing the seed. You're not going to be in charge of the soil of the harvest. You can't be. Because you don't know how it's going to work. You don't know where seeds are being sown. 
Many, many times I hear stories of people that have come back to the church or came into the church. And I say, what happened? And a lot of times it's somebody, not a priest, not a bishop, not even a deacon, I'm sorry. It's a lay person that they happen to run into or meet and sow the seed by being Christian, by living a Christ-like life. And they saw hope in that person. They saw joy in that person, even though the garbage around them was going on. So that person, just by their life, I did the seed. Some of the saints, they walked into church one day, then they weren't Catholic. They walked into church one day, sat down in the back, and when the gospel was read, it went right into them. And from then on, they wanted to be Catholic. Modern day person, Scott Hunt, tried to persecute the Catholic Church to prove the Catholic Church was wrong. So he studied, and he studied, and when he studied the Church Fathers, we got you. Because <laughs> you begin to realize it has existed since the beginning, and what we teach today, we taught them. So he was in a quandary. All his life, he wanted to prove us wrong. But the fathers of the church, reading them, so to see. This is proud right away. No. Finally, he went to a Catholic mass. He sat in the back pew, and he watched. And all of a sudden, it hit him. This is where I belong. The fruit had been born. And now, of course, all the books he's written, all the retreats he's given, on and on and on. We have this going on all the time. Some of the priests, the younger priests, will tell us, oh, I became a priest because I'm being a priest because of Father so-and-so. Us older priests will tell you, a lot of times, I just thought I'd ask the vocation director and see what happened. <laughs> It happened. But no, I had I had uh, several pieces in my life that planted seeds. And it wasn't the preaching. It wasn't the teaching. It was the way they lived their life. 24-7 being a happy priest. Not all the time. My one priest, one of the priests I know was not very nice about the criminals in Congress all the time. So he kept, that got in the way. But now I understand. So, <laughs> the planting seeds. We are called by, as, by Christ to live our lives as Christians. Not to buy into the world and what it teaches, but to buy into the gospel and what it teaches. To buy into Jesus and what it teaches. And live our lives accordingly. So that people look at us and say, hey, you're living different. You're not always on alcohol and drugs and whatever else. You do things differently. You see things differently. You know what? You hum tunes when you should be humming tunes. There's nothing dumb about it. And it turns in their the direction and they say, wait, maybe I want to be a Christian. So Jesus is letting the apostles know, and now us, we can sow seeds. But we're not going to see how it works. Sometimes we're not going to see how it works until the end of time we all get to where we're going. And we can look and say, oh, that's what happened. There's a saying that it takes 10 years for a priest to be in a parish before it bears seminarians. There's also another saying. You as a pastor might be dead before the seminarians start coming out of that parish. So don't get too prideful and arrogant. So you see, we don't know how it's going to happen. But it's going to happen. Jesus said that in the next parable. <coughs> the mustard plant. It's a weed, like tumbleweed, Russian thistle. The mustard seed of mustard plant over there is a weed. It sows thousands of seeds when you touch it when it gets dry in July and August. It sprouts first. It rises up so fast, it drowns out the sunlight from the cross. <laughs> it's when Jesus mentioned this mustard plant, 
people would have cringed because their worst nightmare was to get mustard in their wheat and what they were wrong. I read an article on four of the fires season in California. Mustard is an invasive species in California. It dries out in July and August just in time for the fire season. It spreads thousands of seeds and it sprouts first so it can die by fire season. Between this mustard and the grasses, that's what fuels the fires in California. Are they going to eradicate it? No, they don't know how. Unless it grows too fast. When it gets six feet tall, it's got a stem around it this big around. About five inches. It's very difficult to eradicate. So it's a nasty plant. But Jesus is using it because it's one of the largest plants in the Middle East. And it starts from this tiny little seed. <clears throat> we have plants that are much bigger that start out from a seed that is much smaller. The giant redwoods in California and on up to Washington State start out from a seed the size of a tomato seed to blow your mind. How did God put that big old redwood in that little little <laughs> And they lived for thousands of years. Some of the redwoods we have today started life when Jesus was on the earth 2,000 years ago. All started with this little seed. So Jesus is saying, it doesn't matter the size of the seed that we plant. It will sprout. And it will become big. The kingdom of heaven will become big. It's not up to us to do this to happen. But it will become huge. Become tremendous. But not right now. At the end of time. It will be huge. And it will be because of people like you that planted seeds by the way you lived your life. By the way you talked. By the way you interacted with people. That will be how the kingdom of heaven sprouts at the end of time. Notice I didn't say priest. Me. No. Priests sometimes get in the way. But more than that, people come up to you and say, Oh, Father, we heard you say this, but you're paid to say that. I am not. <laughs> Bishop doesn't pay me to talk about the annual Catholic field. I don't get paid to talk about some of the things I talk about. But people say, oh, but that's your job. No, it's not. So anyway, you don't listen to me because it's my job. Because I'm paid to say it. But they listen and watch all of you. Planting seeds. And they look to see if you're authentic. Do you walk the walk that you say you believe it. Do you do that? That's planting a seed. If you don't plant that seed, then the kingdom of heaven might be missed a little bit. You might have people that should have been saved, didn't. It's a long time teaching in the Jewish faith and the Christian faith that if you save a soul from going to hell, you will save the verse as well. That impetus enough, or should be, for planting the seed of the gospel of Christ. For living the life that we have to live opposite what the world is saying is okay. So Jesus was letting know, hey, it's up to you to plant the seed. But it's not up to you to see how it grows and how much it produces. So the disciples would have been said, okay, that's cool. We'll go out and we'll do it. But you and I are supposed to do the same thing. Plant the seed and then leave it up to God to see how much it's going to bear fruit. And make that our vocation in life as well. Bring people to the kingdom of heaven. Bring people to Christ. God bless you.
I believe. church on earth, that it may welcome and redeem the cultures and values of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For leaders whose plans influence the economy, that they may encourage and support farmers and all those who help to bring food to our table, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who develop the land, that as they make this earth more productive, so may they reverence the natural environment created by God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our own community, that we may grow in grace as we welcome people of the, of, to the life of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our departed brothers and sisters, that they may live forever in the courts of our God, especially John and Pauline Conrad, Stan and Marie Merrick, Joshua Matheson, and Juan Andrews. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God. Almighty God, through the source of all goodness and grace, which of these prayers we make as our intercession for others, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our operatory hymn is this alone. Oh, 
and rise from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. We may live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe. To bring to perfection his work in the world, to my sanctified creation to the full. Therefore, Lord, we pray, the same Holy Spirit, which is exacted by these offerings, then we become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself loved us as the eternal God. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, for the most holy, having loved his own in the world, he loved him to the end. While there was supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat up. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the child to spill the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks, he gave the child to two disciples the same. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new eternal covenant should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When Jesus bread, drink the cup, he proclaims your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, through Christ's death and his ascent to the realm of the dead, through Christ's resurrection and his ascension to your right hand, as we wait his coming in glory, God his body and blood, sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look the Lord upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant your loving kindness to all partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, we may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ, the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all whom we offer the sacrifice. Bless your servant Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all order of bishops, all the clergy, those take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, and your entire people, all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone enough. To all of us, your children, grant all our small men men and healthy inheritance. Bless the Virgin Mary, Mother of God. To Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, free from the corruption of sin and death. We glorify you through Christ our Lord, we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, unity to the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> At the Savior's command, before my divine teaching, we dare to say, grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe all the strife. As we have the hope, in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. But not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, will it reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Be my soul, my 
Would all fathers please stand? Oh, well, you can sit down, God can take care of your own. <laughs> I should say, all fathers that can stand, please. <laughs> Dear Lord, bless every father and every grandfather with the best of your spiritual blessings today. Let him know he's not alone in the task you give him to provide for and support those under his care. Show him how much you delight in his work. Affirm the value of whatever you have given him to do, whether it's a father or grandfather and it's a child of yours. Confirm his work daily so he has no reason to doubt whether he is loved in the eyes of our Heavenly Father. Pray him a deep sense of trust in you, knowing that he can count on you to help him lead and protect those dependent on him. Let him know that every unselfish act of love and encouragement he has offered is in a gift that you will gladly receive. Show him how effective the prayers of a godly man really are, what a difference he has can make to those around him, no matter how big or small the assignment. When challenging times push him beyond his limits, assuring that you can take him further, speak deep into his spirit the powerful words he longs to hear from you, and nothing can ever separate him from your love. Help him to grasp firmly the promises of your word, standing with faith on the things you declare are true. Reward him for his faithfulness past, present, and future, assuring him that true success and satisfaction don't lie in his accomplishments, accomplishments or accolades, and a steadfast, Christ-like character you are forming in him. Demonstrate to him your amazing grace and forgiveness as he seeks to love and to know you with all his heart, mind, and soul. Release him from unwanted, unwanted burdens of false guilt, and bless him for his willingness to keep short accounts with you, forgiving both himself and others. Help him to see his children or grandchildren through your eyes, realizing that in your hands is the safest place they can ever be. Strengthen his confidence in the only one who can bring good out of any situation. Teach him how to make the needs of his child's life that are within his ability to do so, but help him to trust you for the rest. Push out any needless fears and grant him godly wisdom and spiritual guidance to lead and direct these precious children in your path, knowing that he will also release them in your hands with powerful love. Complete any healing of past hurts or regrets that may interfere with parenting or grandparenting his children. Strengthen him a sense of joy, humility, and playfulness that draws his family close. When plans don't develop as he hopes, or dreams not realized, open his eyes to see beyond this world the greater joy that never disappoints. No father will never leave or abandon him for his loved ones. Give him a passion and faith, persevering spirit, powerful testimony that overcomes any weakness or doubt as he wears the armor of God daily to provide it for him as a spiritual leader and child of God. Today on special days and for all the days of his life, fill him with the best of your blessings. So he will one day stand before you and hear your ultimate words of praise. Well done, my son. Well done. May God bless all of you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, ladies, please stand.
At this reception of your Holy Communion Award, we shall the union of the faithful in you. So may bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh. 